with a Y in it, and you were like, why don't we just call it Book Dragons? I was like, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> that like, too. yours is clever, but I just went, um, uh, forget it. Well, he's got time to be clever as well. <laughs> because if you say bookworms... You can't like, tell. Yeah. But I was like, that's the thing, yeah. a bookworm. So if I say book dragon... I <laughs> guess. Yeah. Well, because dragons, they hoard. They have a hoard. Usually gold, but yeah. ours is books. Well, that's the tagline. The tagline is um, podcasting to give an excuse to our book hoarding ways. Or yeah, that like even purpose that's good. to our book hoarding ways. I like that. Um, yeah. Go! Hello! Hello, Hi. hello, hello! Um, this is, we have name, we're book dragons, we're here to talk about books. It's done well. I feel like we've done the homework this week. We're, we're all good. Yeah, we've had a lot to talk about. I'm very excited. I've looked forward to this all week. <laughs> I ha- it's come around quickly, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really tired, but I'm going to yeah. power through. Um, I'm going to tell you now that this will be available on YouTube and iTunes. We're working on Stitcher. That's not there yet, but they mean to. Um, yeah, we'll so be there. Just search Book Dragons or Book Dragons Podcast. Uh, you'll find us. We're on uh, Twitter as well. We are on Twitter. We're at it does. <laughs> We're on Google because you have to have a Google page if you want a YouTube page. Oh, okay. Apparently. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're kind of on Facebook. If oh, you want to find us on Facebook, search for Emsos in 3D. So there's my website, emsos.com, or there's Emsos in 3D on Facebook, and I'll post updates every so often on there. Because I know not everyone's on Google Plus. I keep telling people to go on it, <laughs> but no one listens to me. I might not be on it, just so. <laughs> um, so book news. This week was banned books week. Yep. Um, and we've had a list to go through. Uh, the Guardian basically posted a list of the most challenged books in the U. In the US, strangely, I don't know if there's a list for the UK, or maybe we're just more (laughs) open-minded. I think, I I don't know, we must be, because it's odd for the Guardian to go for the American, being as it's like an English I must point out though, it says uh, they received 464, so out of the millions of people in America, that's not not that many. It's not very many, so, but it's interesting to look at, Um, so we'll quickly run through. There's Captain Underpants by Dave Pilkey. Um, Which has got to be like a it's way a ki- down the series now. It's a kids book, but offensive language unsuited for age group. They've said, but I think I've heard of this before, and it's quite popular, isn't it? Yeah, from I'm what sure I know I've of. Um, the next one is the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian by Sherman Alexi. I'm generalizing grossly, or Alexi. but I'm going to say <laughs> it's literally the use of the word Indian. Offensive language, racism, sexually explicit, and yeah. suited for age group. But it's a National Book Award winner. I mean, can you ban a National Book Award winner? You can. can you be that close minded yeah. as to say, no, forget you, you know, just because, you know, some council of people have sat down, reviewed all the books, and said, this one, it's good, we'll give this one the award. That doesn't actually give no. it the opportunity to be displayed in the library where people might read it. I feel that's a a trend though I don't know if it's just the sense that it's popular or that it then brings it into schools Um, we'll come to a John Green book in a moment but I know he's talked about that that they've challenged his books um, which he's obviously not happy it's when it goes into a school perhaps I think yeah in particular uh, because the colour purple was on that other list we were looking at yeah and obviously there's a lot of uh, sex there's rape it's very heavy going but it's a big sort of GCSE style, yeah. you know, it's it's one of those that gets used a lot for like yeah. English classes. Yeah. But because it's an important book and it's important issues, and sometimes important issues are quite tricky to talk about, but it's important to talk about them. Yeah. So it's a shame to just want to blank it out and go, nope, nope, nope. It's not going to go away just yeah. because you take away the books on it. Yeah. Like, surely it's better to actually inform people and then they're actually equipped to deal with the situation yeah in fact this reminds me of a time at school where my dad kicked off because we had this was an a level as well so i was somewhere between 16 and 18 yeah so old enough to make up my own mind and we had printed out uh this the beginning to train spotting 
which oh, is right, yeah. like it's oh, the I, most after child we, after friendly. After you talking about language, so oh, I'm, no. we're going to have to make a call here whether we whether we can swear we or bleep not. this or just go for explicit because the it's something along with fuck work, fuck the television, fuck this, fuck yeah. fuck fuck this, um, and he saw it and he kicked off, was ready to go to my teacher, and was like, no, he's my favourite teacher, he warned us that there'd be language, we're going to look at this in an academic way, it's not for the... It's not for the gratuitous use of language, it's... Oh, Oh, so, so, I mean... He almost got there, we were almost at the school, and then I convinced him to turn around. Oh no, he he purposely picked me up, so that he he sneak he snuck into the school. But then I made him turn around and went, "No, it's my favorite teacher." (laughs) Um, Right, let's carry on. Uh, Number three was Thirteen Reasons Why" by Jay Asher, which I have read, um, Mm. and I really enjoyed. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, If I mean, if I was guessing, I'm assuming it's the the fact that the girl who is is um, leaving these tapes for people has committed suicide, and you then find out why thirteen reasons why over the course of the book. So I can see people saying, "Oh, well, that's maybe sort of presenting suicide as a choice." Um, but if you'd actually stopped and read the book you would see it's actually a very sad, tragic occurrence. And you see how her life goes downhill because every reason is actually a person. And so there's an explanation given as to why that person has contributed to her decision. And the very last one um, is a teacher. And she basically makes a cry for help to this teacher directly and, and pretty much says that this is what she's going to do. She's going to go home and kill herself. And something, although I can't remember what, interrupts, and so she leaves and the teacher doesn't go after her. And so even if that's what you take away from it, that maybe you could be that last person, that last cry for help for someone, isn't that a good thing to to kind of... Yeah. To take that chance and just, you know, if you're concerned about someone you know, to actually be the one who isn't a reason why, who stands up and goes, hang on a minute, like, maybe we should sit down and have a cup of tea. Like, yeah. let's talk about it. <laughs> Number four, Fifty Shades of Grey. It, yeah. Might have read it. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. Yale James. I don't, think we, I don't think we need to hang on to that one. I no. think people can guess It's been why. said. Yeah. It's not great. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Could have written better myself. Number five... If it loads in time. Oh no, you've got the pad. <laughs> Pretend like we're not having technical difficulties. I can read it, I can read it. Okay. <laughs> Kite Runner by, oh, I was going to say E.L. James, but that's, uh, it's not loaded no. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, correct me if I'm wrong, but have I not heard of Kite Runner? Is that, has that not been around a while? That is not me typing. No, this. we're not just, we're not surreptitiously <laughs> Googling in the background here. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure this is not by Khaled Hosseini. If the, unless there's a different book under the same title, I am sure this is not a new release. No, but it was obviously challenged this year. So the comp- it doesn't have to be a book release this year, but it's the complaints have appeared. Oh, I see. So it's new yeah. complaints. Oh, I'm with so you. So it's people complaining uh, for them to be removed from libraries. So obviously something's happened for it to come into the limelight. Again, I wonder if it's because it's entered into a school syllabus. Possibly, yeah, if it's Uh, it's being... Oh, the good old days of (laughs) boys killing each other on an island. And number seven is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Um, Like I said, he's... Same reason it's entered into the school. Yeah. Um, Their reasoning is offensive language, sexually explicit, unsuited for age group. I really hate that as an excuse because it undermines what a child is capable of comprehending and understanding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I read uh, The Fault in Our Stars because it was a, you know, it was quite a big deal now. There's a lot of teenagers who really enjoy that book, and there's a bit of sex in it. There's a bit of language. It deals with very heavy issues. Yeah. But it's a brilliant book, and it's a great way for kids and teens to look at these issues. 
And then to just try and take that away from them. It's very sad. Well, I think I think nowadays there is more of like a teen fiction section than Mm. there used to be. I vaguely recall being in like Waterstones or Borders or somewhere. And there used to be, say, the 9 to 12 bit. And then you would just move straight up to the, the adult areas of the bookshop mm. and so I probably read some grossly inappropriate stuff <laughs> because you yeah. know like it it had a dragon on the front or whatever and I don't think it did me any permanent harm I, no. I seem to be a fairly well-rounded person I have to do these checks every so often I'll watch something and go oh, how did they get away with that in a film isn't that <laughs> that's, awful. that's too horrible and then I go no wait think of the kind of things I watched when I was yeah. 10 Just... I was trying to South Park came out when we were 10. Oh my god. So everyone was going crazy about it. The most offensive, like, it is, it's, touch show. It's but we offensive. all somehow managed to watch it and we came out the other side pretty okay. I think. Yeah, we're not, we're not a society <laughs> of deviants now, so. Uh, number eight is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz. This is a book I've seen pictures of. I yes. think if you've not heard of it, you might have seen the pictures from it because they're very creepy. Very... They're quite distinctive as well. Yeah. Like you probably have come across mm. them without realizing it. Yeah. Would I be right in saying this is the only one on the list that is on there for being scary or creepy? Definitely so far. And violent because it said violence. I don't think that's come up so far. It's usually sex language and suited for age group. Yeah, and suited for age group. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can I can see that being a more legitimate basis. I'm I'm making the assumption mm. that this is complaints to schools generally that we're talking mm. about. If your child goes to school, reads a book that gives it nightmares, yeah, okay, maybe you might want to say to the school, "Look, I'm yeah. I'm struggling with this one. Aww. You've terrified my child." That would be my kid. I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be the one who can handle it. Yeah, but I can. That I can support more than I can support people just being like, I can't yeah. believe you're exposing kids to this, you know. Yeah. Um, number nine, I've not heard of. The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Uh, reasons, offensive language, sexually explicit. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. And the last one is Beloved, a novel by Toni Morrison. Uh, sexually explicit, religious viewpoint violence. That's the first time oh, we've seen religious religion. viewpoint um, because I know a lot of people have challenged uh, Philip Pullman in the past yes, for that reason. For the, uh, his dark materials. Yeah. Very anti-Christian. Which, I have to say, I mean, I did read it, I was probably like 14 or something when I mm. read the series. I didn't even spot it. I, when I, was, <laughs> I was in it for the talking animal that would follow you around. I was like, oh my god, I want one. I want one so much. Mm. And I did, yeah, it was only upon repeat readings after I'd heard of the controversy that I actually spotted that. So that, to me, is, again, a really strange reason to be banning books because I didn't even, I didn't even make that connection that it was a metaphor for Christianity because I was a kid and I yeah. didn't think that much yeah. into it. Um, it's very, like, once you've been told that, though, it's very obvious when you yeah. go back to read it. It's more, it's not so much the belief it's the organisation. Yeah. Oh, it's the, the church. Authority. Yeah. 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 Um, But Philip Pullman also wrote another book uh, that I bought in Edinburgh during the festival. I can't quite see it. Is it something like um, the uh, child Jesus and the scoundrel Christ? Okay. Is, can you spot it? Is it there? Um, <laughs> what does it look like? <laughs> Oh, if excuse it's not, me while if I go it's, digging. It's not hanging out the oh, whole. Oh no, it's no. I think we no. might have to give up on that search of oh my like God. the mass, <laughs> my masses of books. Yeah. It's because I'm sure I spotted it the other day, so I thought it'd be easy to see. Okay. Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, come back, come back, come back. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and the whole story is it's a retelling of like the birth of Jesus, but told with the idea that he had a brother. So one is called Jesus and one is called Christ. Okay. So one has the, if I remember right, it's been a few years since I read it, one has his 
magical abilities of yeah, Jesus. We'll go for that. And the other has the compassionate soul and it's all about them growing up and one's maybe not as nice, but then he gets the reputation of okay. and it's all this kind of maybe an alternative look of how it could have happened. See I like that. That's, yeah, that I'm really, interested yeah. now. It's very interesting very interesting, um, really well written because it's filled with Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, check that out. I'll find the novel, uh, the name, the proper name, and stick it in the description. So yeah. look out for that. Um, oh, that's a good point. I will be putting the full list of books that we mention on the website rather than the description because okay. it, they will become quite long. <laughs> yes, like this this time definitely. Yeah, so that will be on the website. Um, uh, next is the news of Goosebumps. Geese oh, how retro is that? Jack Black might be coming on board to play the author. R.L. Stein. Um, R.L. St- I don't know is if it, he's playing. Is he not playing R.L. Stein? He's, he is a Stein-like author whose scary characters literally leap off the page, forcing him to hide from his own creepy creations. Mm. So it's a bit meta <laughs> goosebumps was always a bit meta yeah like, that's true they introduced me to the awesomeness of a choose your own adventure book oh my god and oh. that just revolutionized my reading experience i always read the wrong i'd forget to pick a page and then just keep reading through like an old book and i go oh that ending was a bit weird How, what? <laughs> i used to try and I'd, I'd have all my fingers wedged in the books because i was trying to see where the good ending was so i didn't go back try the other one you to page 17 <laughs> also the news was a the release of a trailer um i forgot to look at the title it's about mary poppins saving mr banks that's the one. Same as Banks. <laughs> she showed Robert. me this five minutes ago. Yeah, but um, I forgot the name. You can you can be you can be forgiven for not knowing how much of a massive Disney addict I am. So <laughs> I mean, can I remember anything to pass an exam? No, but you give me a piece of Disney trivia and it is right here. <laughs> um, it's not based off. I don't think a book has been written about this, but it's because it's a real thing that happened. Yeah. That the um, the woman who wrote Mary Poppins. Um, at first wouldn't let him have the rights to her, to was very picky about it, but Disney have made it into a very uplifting film, it looks like. It looks like a very well, nice. we know how it ends, because <laughs> I'm sure you've seen Mary Poppins, the Disney film. Yeah. So, and I'm a fan of this. I like, I like to, I like to know there is a happy ending on the horizon, you know, it, yeah. it lets me forgive a multitude of, like, devastating second acts. So... <laughs> I am intrigued, and it looks as though there's a bit of a retro tour around Disneyland in there, yeah. and I'm very up for that one. Yeah. Well, it's Tom Hanks, it's Emma Thompson. I think that's a really that's an good, interesting pairing. Yeah, really good duo, two very good actors, and yeah. enjoyable. And they're actors. good serious actors as yeah. well. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in this one. This is going to be well worth a watch for me. Um, and I think that's all the news. So uh, today's main topic was not adaptations, but continuations Yes. of films and TV that then get continued in the form of a book or a comic. comic. And what instantly came to mind for me was everything Joss Whedon. <laughs> well, it's so, often how like that is the case, <laughs> is it not? <laughs> so... Buffy, even though Buffy had like a really nice ending, it rounded everything off, it was the only Joss Whedon show that kind of had the full length that it needed. I'm not commenting, <laughs> do you know what, because we'll be here for the next three yeah. hours if you tell me you think that... Not so there's Buffy season eight, which is. is the comic series, um, and now I believe they're still going, and I think they're on season nine. Yeah, and it was odd. Season eight did make some odd. It was really unusual. <laughs> it's very trippy, I think. Um, <laughs> because obviously they they're no longer restricted to things they like, can do like on, budget yeah. or timing or, or actors' anything. availability, yeah. even. So. so they've just taken Buffy and gone crazy with yeah, it. Yeah, it is quite um, mental. Dawn's a giant. The heart, which is cursed, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. And then and then Willow's just zipping off to talk to demons or whatever. It's really There's crazy. the whole Buffy and Angel thing. Did you <laughs> did you get that far? I don't 
Thanks. They like have sex whilst flying through the oh, air. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. And is there no spikes running? Yeah. <laughs> a ship with insects. Yeah. On top. And you're like, I think we've lost <laughs> sight of what we were doing I here. I completely forgot about that. It's so weird. It reads <laughs> like fan fiction almost, except that it's canon. It's so strange. Oh, it's hilarious. But she, they did also, <laughs> they did a crossover bit as well, didn't they? Where oh. because there is Joss also has a comic book series called Frey, which is set in the future. Yeah, but it's the Buffyverse yeah. future. And I'm sure they did a crossover with Yeah, she that. goes to meet this future Slayer. Yeah. And doesn't she have that, uh, like, ultimate Slayer weapon? The axe thingy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, the scythe. The Which scythe. was, if you didn't know, appears in, yeah. or Once Upon a Time, possibly, maybe. <laughs> it's there, it's there, we'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> it it um, actually seems to pop up around the place, like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's obviously just getting passed around the studio. People just who just, like, put it in the background, put it in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then Firefly is continued again. I read the first one. I can't even remember what it's about. Well, they did um, a few that were to tell, to tie up the stories they didn't get to yeah. tell. So they weren't, they were, I would say, more of an expansion than a continuation because they did one, I think. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they've, but they have released one that explains Shepard, which I've not actually read. No, I haven't, and I really mm. want to because he's fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. Look at his hair, man. <laughs> yes. Um, um, and it, this week they announced that they're doing the same for Serenity. Now, yes. if you're thinking it's the same thing, it's a continuation of after the movie. Rather if you're than thinking the it's the same thing, go to your Netflix or DVD <laughs> collection or find a, a, like a friend because. Is worth a watch, I would say. Like, Firefly yeah. is short and Serenity, their big damn movie, was yeah. just awesome. Um, except for Joss and his tendencies towards things that I would rather not have happen to certain Aww. characters. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Um, not over it. And then another show that continued was Avatar. Not forget the blue aliens <laughs> when i say avatar i never mean blue aliens no, unless we explicitly say that <laughs> beforehand no which... but i didn't like it but it just annoys yeah, me because fun. avatar is like the ultimate thing because avatar came it's... first yeah. the last day of ender avatar that continued um they had a series called the promise um it was kind of cool it Toph had a school where she was teaching people to metal bend, so that that's like cool. the start of that. Oh, leading up yeah. to Korra, I and see. And then there's also, starts, there's um, lots of issues between different nations coming together, so there's like a couple that one's a firebender, one's a waterbender, and so Zuko and Anger trying to get people to, well, oh, live together in harmony, and obviously it doesn't go that it's well. Planned. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a series after that, which is called uh, The Search, I believe. And it's all about Zuko finally looking for his mother. Are we doing the mum one? Oh yeah. my god, we're going so there. So I need to read... I've, yeah. For some reason, for all of these, I've read the first chunk of continuation and then not picked up the second one. But I think for this one, I'll have to. I, I need, have to say I need that. to know. <laughs> oh, I need to know. I will, I will steal <laughs> your comics. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that, that gets me... <laughs> generally speaking with the with the comics um are that they're quite difficult and expensive to get hold of um, yeah because yeah. i i cannot really tell you how much of a huge buffy angel fan i am mm. and i i couldn't really get hold of the comics at all and it was quite devastating yeah. to me see if you're listening to this like and you're in america or canada it's like, I was in Toronto for 10 months, and we had a comic book shop down the road. Like, it's, it was... Yeah. I mean, you're not saying that everything was easy to get. There's things that would sell out that would be on a limited run that are quite hard to get. But in the UK, the only chance you have is with the full volumes, but they're really expensive. You're looking at £15, sometimes up to 20 for yeah. a volume. And then you have um, to wait for the volume, so you yeah. can't read as it's being released. Or, unless you want to pay the shipping and yeah. order it from America, which is... I mean, it is expensive. I'm not saying yeah. it's not worth it. There are 
There's an online shop called Comixology. Yeah. But the problem for us in the UK is we also get charged an overseas fee yes. of one pound fifty, which I was not happy about when I found out because suddenly those ninety nine cent deals don't look so great when you're then when you're paying slippies. more. For the, yeah. yeah. Maybe if you have a huge bundle that you're gonna get all in one go. Then that's fine, then, it's negligible, yeah, you know, it's, it's just your postage. But I was a bit annoyed because I didn't realise. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um and then I wanted to talk about Hellboy. Uh Hellboy the films are kind of going back in two. One day there's gonna be a third one, the next day it's not gonna happen. I was going to say George R. R. Martin then because it's written down. No, <laughs> no yeah, we'll, we'll come to him. Del Toro, Glamour Del Toro. He, um, I'm glad he you knows, said his name because I couldn't I'm not sure it. if that's right, but yeah. I'll stick with Del Toro. <laughs> he knows how the films end. If he ever gets around to making a third one, he knows he knows exactly what's going to happen. He's even said, you know, I'll get people around a campfire if I have to and tell a story. So was it planned then as a trilogy by him? Did he always know? I think know? so, because there's a lot, there's a whole arc of him ending the world and that's kind of mentioned in the second one. Yeah. So I think he's had this kind of in mind. But he approached the uh, guy who created the character, did the comics, um, and said, can I continue it in a comic? And he can't. Uh, he said, nope, sorry, comics are my realm. If you want Which... TV, film, that's all yours, but comics are mine. I can understand. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's a shame on the one hand, but on the other hand, he's completely right. Comics are his thing. Mm. Um, I can't really get too angry about it, but a little bit disappointing, because it would be very cool to see yeah. another Hellboy movie slash comic mm. or whatever it is that was going to finish that story. Because... I personally haven't actually read the Hellboy comics. I've only I seen actually, no. the films and yeah. really enjoyed it. Loved the sense of humour and love the like second one. The oh. second one's brilliant. Okay, just... I love the second one, but they're not so. <laughs> <laughs> because he just went for it and brought in all these like fantasy elements, and it almost became a different genre from one to two, and it just benefited so much from the whole the, go the troll market um, oh that that was an incredible scene just the character designs of everything is gorgeous and yeah i really hope it gets to happen but there's a limited time as yeah. he as he pointed out ron pillman is only getting older <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> can't play him forever <laughs> and talking of someone who's getting uh, older i see what you did there George R. R. Martin <laughs> is very aware that he won't live forever um, and, and that the show for Game of Thrones is only three seasons in and there are seven books now? Well, at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's not finished the books, but he's had to tell the TV producers how Game of Thrones ends. Because his, his publication has slowed down a lot. Which mm. he's got a lot of characters. So. Yeah. yeah. So this could be. We kind of only wanted to mention this because it's a very. It's interesting. It's unique because it might be the first time that a television show has had the opportunity to finish a story that a book can't. Yeah, I mean, without being too morbid about it, <laughs> because perhaps it's the case that he's still there, still writing the books, but because he has slowed down, mm. maybe. TV show will end before the books end hmm. and there's obviously going to be a point of like divergence between the um, <laughs> sorry yeah between the, uh, the the TV shows adaptation and and the book mm -hmm. so you know you're not going to necessarily be able to to directly apply whatever the TV show does to end it to to the character um, sort of development that has happened in the books but it's it's interesting, you know, to think. I mean, would that then would would the people who are going crazy because they don't know the spoilers that are in the books for the show suddenly have the moral high ground because they have the spoilers <laughs> for the people who are reading the books? Like, oh, like don't get me started on spoilers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I have been on a perma ban from Tumblr for the last four days because Shield. Someone got a show before we did. Yeah, for what you know this for. The UK is not a very long wait 
But basically, Shield aired on Tuesday, and we're recording this on a Friday. I did it. It's I hadn't sh- noticed. <laughs> we're gonna run off and watch it. Yeah, after this. Um, but I've just watched myself from Tumblr because Tumblr is the worst place for spoilers. Yes, it is. They will moan about tagging everything, but then when it comes down to a TV show, they won't just People stick. Get over it. They won't put spoiler at the bottom. And you know, Game of Thrones fans. Uh, They've well the the book fans they've held on to the Red Wedding for about oh, what fifteen years like something like bless that? them for doing because they, I have the utmost respect for anyone who read those books yeah. ahead of the show and kept it quiet. You are amazing people, honestly. And then I've <laughs> I've I've heard since that there are some things that were kind of expediated I guess like mm. the, the certain event didn't technically yeah, happen yeah. at the wedding and but you know what thank you for, yeah. for not ruining that for those because, of us who came to the show because yeah. I was aware of the books I have to say like mm. um, our, some of our friends read them Chris and Andy both yeah. read them and I knew they were out there I knew I'd get around to it eventually and then the tv show came along and I was like oh my god what how did I not read them sooner and then I made the strangest decision I've ever made in my life, which was that I'm enjoying the show so much, mm. I don't want to read the spoilers by reading the I, books. I came to the same conclusion. I think if I carry on with it, I will watch the TV show first. And, and I've then. read I've read the first two books. Not I've not bad. read the third one. Because it's they're a nice complement to each other. Mm. Um, you It kind of fills in details that you might have forgotten. That might change as like events kind of veer off away from yeah. the books, but I was in the same boat. I, there's not many shows that can surprise you, and obviously you don't get the surprise if you have some idea of what's happening. Um, so I'm in the same boat. It's very strange how I've turned around. I used to be must read must the read book books must, before must the film. All. And then I can criticise it better, yeah, which like, is I a can, stupid view. I can only like, watch the film once I've earned the, the, the yeah. cred by reading the books, and yeah. now I'm sort of like, do you know what? Yeah, no. Oh, cool. Like Hunger Games, hey, yeah. I've not read the book. Have that's you? never, I think that's the first major, you know, film where you, made, you made that choice. Where I've made, yeah, I'm perfectly happy See, to I, just watch the film, because uh, it was yeah. really great. I have to say, I, I have read the book. And I actually prefer to some of the aspects of the film uh, because with the Hunger Games in particular, when you read the book, obviously it's, it's it's first person or near enough, so it's all Katniss and what's going on for her. Whereas the film shows you events, it shows you the the sort of almost revolution gearing up in the other um, sectors, which you don't get an idea of until the mm. second Hunger Games book because Katniss doesn't know. And so I thought that was like a, an example of a really great move by the mm. film to be like, hang on a minute, well, why don't we just kind of show it now? Why don't we just include it now? Because even though it makes sense liter- like, yeah. <laughs> literally, literally in the book, <laughs> literally, um, <laughs> that obviously Katniss isn't going to know these things, so they couldn't be included there. Mm. The film isn't bound by that same yeah. rule, which yeah. is cool. And even though I've not seen the comparison, it's obviously like benefited from that. Yeah. I mean, because the riot, the whole riot thing and the holding up the fingers, it's like, you know, it's a really important moment. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm quite glad they went in that direction. So, we're covering a lot of different things uh, today. And there's obviously a difference between continuations and tie ins or spin offs. So we've not talked so much about tie-ins yeah. in terms of, there are, there are quite a few like TV shows and things that do have tie-in novels yeah. and like an expanded universe. Yeah. So we're kind of going to move on to tie-ins. So these aren't things that, uh, I suppose continuation is when they can't carry on. So and they, it's, they tell it. It's canon, yeah. basically. No, because then it's still canon in the spin-off, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not, it's not, it, I guess it's more linear, a continuation, yeah. it carries on yeah. from wherever the story left off, yeah. it tells you what happens mm. next, yeah. whereas a tie-in is, is a companion, <laughs> no, I see what you did no. there. even though we're not doing Doctor Who just yet, we'll get there, we'll get there, <laughs> um, 
like Avengers is all over the place and we're talking about comic books a lot today so I yeah. apologize I hopefully we've fitted a lot of book talk well, but, a lot of it, you know. it's it's yeah. there as well you know a lot yeah. of a lot of these like <laughs> fandoms that they're, they're over different mediums now and it's uh, <laughs> it's a wide literary world out there yeah um so Avengers again really matter because Films come from the comics, yeah, and then the films then inspire more comics, because Marvel and DC is the same. They're very unusual in the way that they have multiple universes. Um, so six one six is their main, you know, main run, that's okay. their main Earth, and now they've attached a number. I don't know if the fans did this or if they did this. It's oh. like nine one nine 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 or something like that. Uh, and that's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. That there are also comics of, but it's still. But it's the, it's yeah. the, it's the actual film versions. Yeah. So they did mini prequel comics. Yeah. To go ahead of the film, it was like a nice little attachment. That's quite um, fun. But the really fun thing about Avengers is Coulson. <laughs> he. Started out as just an extra with a few lines, pretty much, and then it was more, and then he was signed off for another film, and another film, and then, and now we're about to watch a show where I, he's I, yeah. in charge of everything. Because he, um, he just got progressively more awesome and yeah. badass, and you know what, funny? Yeah. Like, the, yeah, I just, I love him. Like, he he is the shiny example of character development. He's just brilliant. <laughs> but I think he's even made it back into the 616 universe. I th- I'm pretty sure he's actually made it into the real universe. I don't know. Because um, my comic knowledge is more DC yeah. than Marvel, I have to say. Yeah. So I'm more like, you know, at Earth 1 and Earth 2 and all this than, like, the actual proper <laughs> specification. <laughs> With your 55s and your 1s. <laughs> Stop it with the numbers. <laughs> See, that makes more sense than 616. Well, no, because they had to, like, collapse down. They had too many. So they did a crisis and, like, oh, they destroyed yeah, a lot. Of, yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard of this. <laughs> it's fairly notorious <laughs> for many reasons. And Coulson was also in the Spider-Man cartoon, the one that's on at the moment. So... They're just sticking Wait, of of the like everywhere. twelve Spider Man cartoons that I the, have seen. The current one. The, oh, the one that's actually showing. Yeah. Now. Okay. Ultimate? Yeah. Don't even know anymore. There's been so many. I'm not a fan, so. There you go. Enough said. Um. Oh, and I also wanted to talk about because you brought up Nick Fury before. I had a misconception about Nick Fury. So. <laughs> Again, for those not in the know, Nick Fury, the original Nick Fury, was white. He was very old. But the Nick Fury you see in the Avengers is inspired by the one from the Ultimate Comics. Which I didn't know. I was under the impression that after casting Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, they had like retroactively continuitied Nick Fury to become Samuel L. Jackson in in the comics. But again, they almost have, but I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You tell <laughs> so, um, so in the Ultimates, there's actually like a fun scene where he goes, hey, who do you think would play you like in the film version of this? This this is before Avengers, the film. Yeah. And he actually says, oh, Samuel L. Jackson, of course. <laughs> nice. Although I think Iron Man was like, they suggest Johnny Depp possibly for Iron Man. <laughs> Possibly because it was in a time where people suggested Johnny Depp for every part ever. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I can't say that I wouldn't be interested in seeing that, except for the fact that then Robert Downey Jr. wouldn't be Iron Man, yeah. and I'm not okay no, with that. No, it's not happening yet. <laughs> we, not don't, yet. <laughs> we don't have to cross that bridge. <laughs> um, but in the regular comics, mm-hmm. the regular universe, there is now a black Nick Fury, who is Nick Fury's son. So they have found a way of putting a Nick Fury that moviegoers will recognise into the regular comics, while still sort of making sense. Clever. Yeah. I'm not going to dig too deeply patch. into that, yeah. because I feel like that'll... I didn't, because he's still wearing the eye patch and everything. Okay. Well... But you can't dig too deep with 
makes a larger point. I think, her. yeah, you start to get into realms of continuity that are just painful, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stick to books, I think. <laughs> um, and now we get to Doctor Who. There are loads. Sci-fi, I think, is very big for spin-off books. Yeah, it does seem to have started there. Mm. So I'm sure you've got, like, there must be, there's definitely Star Trek books. There must be Stargate books. There um, are, like, shelves of Doctor Who books. Uh, Maybe that's more of an England thing. I don't really, I don't know how many of those might make it over to America. There but. probably are quite a lot in America by now. Um, yeah. Well, I guess by now. But. Yeah. But I was curious, so I had to check one out. Uh, I've not read it all, because I'm still trying to read um, the book club book. But... It's it kind of read just a bit like a decent fan fiction, <laughs> which it probably is. Because yeah. I mean, Doctor Who was off the air for quite a while. Mm. It's a show that has a lot of writers. You know, mm. you get a lot of. And this week, it's uh, yeah. you know, I don't know, uh, Russell T Davis is coming mm. back for an episode, or Stephen yeah. Moffat, or you know, whoever it is. And so, I think it's hard to pin down one person and say. They control. Oh yeah, you yeah. know the um, yeah. like what I don't know. They 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 are an official writer or they are mm. an unofficial writer, and yeah. I because there are, there are a lot of authors across the books as well. It's not all mm. the same guy that's coming back and writing. Oh every yeah, so yeah. It's it's quite cool. Like yeah. you don't. It get seems that. to be like a, a fairly decent way to get your name down as an author. I mean. Uh, two of my favourite writers have done Doctor Who books, which is why I'm slightly intrigued to read them. Mark Gatiss, um, you'll know him for a while. You'll know him now as, like, the Sherlock guy, or oh. Doctor Who guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, bef like, before now, you would have known him as League of Gentlemen guy. But he actually wrote uh, a book called The Vesuvius Club, which I highly recommend. I have been meaning to ask you if I could put that on my reading list because oh, I've been at it's, yes. like, it's down here do it, on the shelf it. I keep because I'm going to see all we'll, that yeah, we'll make that book club book really for like one to week that. because it is it's only short it's really good really funny um, he's just such a top writer uh, the other one was Ben Aronovich who I spoke about last time in episode zero <laughs> um, so he's one of my favourite authors so I was a bit intrigued about that as well um so yeah, so there's tons of writers that contribute to this huge universe, well, which I mean, is why I get annoyed when people go, <laughs> ooh, fan fiction, it's not your original characters though. It's like, well, yeah, but there's a lot of people who write for, you know, established worlds and established characters. Well, don't, didn't the, um, la it's like last series' episode, you know the one where um, the TARDIS was put into... Um, Idris or whatever the girl mm. was called. I seem to recall that being Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Who wrote yeah. that episode. I mean, yeah. that is that is that that is an established author coming along and being like, do you know what, I, I, I really want to play with your characters. Like, yeah. can, I, can I write you an episode? Yeah. It's, it's great. I think, I don't know if I'm mixing up shows, but I have a feeling that Peter Jackson said he wanted to direct an episode it wouldn't I don't know surprise if I, me. I don't know if I'm confusing shows, but I have a feeling he did. I think there's a lot of love out there <laughs> yeah. amongst, yeah. you know, the actually successful people to want to come mm. and participate in this yeah. sort of show because there's a lot of love for this kind yeah. of show. Um, mm. But yeah, so I think, I think for people to be like, oh no, it's, it's you know, it's getting into fan fiction is kind of harsh because yeah. it doesn't make it bad necessarily. Yeah, yeah it's just. A crazy kind of criticism really because I mean how I approach fan I don't write that much anymore do I mean I think there was like a huge four year gap between the last time I wrote fan fiction and then starting another yeah. but I just kind of set myself those rules I went I'm gonna write this even though it's a silly crossover that would never happen I went I'm gonna write this as if I was someone approaching to make an episode I'm not going to include any extra characters, no Mary Sue's, none of that. It's going to be a story that makes sense in the universe. I'm going to 
So I kind of approached it like that, with like in a professional mind. Yeah. I mean, like I kind of wished maybe a few more people would do that. That would be quite cool. <laughs> There's a <laughs> heavy reliance on either imported characters, crossover characters, or yeah. the dreaded Mary Sue. Yeah. Um, which is not necessary. You can, you know, mm. those characters got themselves published. So yeah. you can do a lot with those characters. You don't, you don't need to rely on writing in a Mary Sue unless you feel like it. That's that's fine if you decide yeah. you want to. Yeah, that's fine. I think you're always tempted to when you're young because you want to be in the yeah, book. Yeah, you want that to be you. You're like, yes, I want to be the super badass chick who can do everything and is already friends with like and the like cast. is way more awesomer and all, <laughs> all the guys love her and <laughs> oh, and like her name is like why. <laughs> Like harmony, chastity, moon glow, serenity, something or other. Like it's. Oh, oh we should write a fun fiction where it's the completely opposite. Where it's like <laughs> <laughs> everyone hates this? us. Who is this shitty person? Why is her hair pink? Go away. <laughs> Just get lost. I realise I'm point. I've pointed. I've, yeah, we've, we've got I've pointed a passion. my face the other way, away <laughs> from the microphone. I should have acted like because now my voice is going to go in the wrong direction. It's fine. I'm gonna treat. The microphone, like you're the, the Mary. Sh- oh no, you're the shitty Mary. Blue, Sue. you are the Mary. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure we had a point. Yeah, um, <laughs> we were going to head towards the. It's, oh, it's old. It's old news. Yeah, but it's interesting because it's the whole Amazon Kindle world. If you've not heard about it, basically, Amazon and Kindle, they wanted a way to make bunny from people writing fan fiction. It's kind of strange though because you're gonna get a set of rules. You can't have slash fiction unless the characters were gay to begin with. You can't make major changes, you can't kill people, can't do anything like that. So you're quite limited. Yeah. That's probably like 80% of fan fiction you've just ruled out. Yeah, so you're gonna write that as if you're writing the next episode. episode. This is kind of, it goes into the realm of ghostwriting and other it companies. It's very strange. I almost would be tempted to say it's, it's not fan fiction, but it's... It strikes oh. me slightly as though it's a sort of auditioning process. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm being optimistic with that statement. Yeah. Because I know you were telling me that if you do publish something and Mm. the writers of the show like it they can use that idea they can put it into the show but I would hope they will keep an eye and so perhaps if someone's coming up with things they're liking a lot Mm. maybe it's a way to get yourself noticed by the actual Mm. writers but I think it's probably not (laughs) yeah I'm very very skeptical because they don't get the best deal out of it no um their ideas could be found for it. So why not just avoid all that and just have the freedom of fan fiction and doing it for free? <laughs> well, there are a lot. Yeah, of I mean, like fan that's fiction. that's a horrible thing. It's because it's it is a paycheck. So it, and it's your f- name being published. So for those two reasons, it must be very tempting. Yeah. But they just do not get a good deal out of it. Um, personally, if I said. I want to write a book, which I almost did, because I was really into World of Warcraft at university, and they have books for World of Warcraft. And I kind of was semi tempted to go, well, why don't I try write one? Yeah. And put this to them and say, do you would want you this like book? Would you like it? Or yeah. would you be interested in the story? The other thing with that is it's a very big universe, <laughs> and yeah, you'd have to catch up with everything. But... See, that's the way I'd go about it. If I was very interested in the universe and said, I want to be one, you know, if I wanted to be a Doctor Who writer, I'd say, uh, how do I do this? I've written this short story. Take a look at it, please. I'm very interested in doing one of these books. You know, talk to me and doing it that way. But I think as well, there's enough fans of fan fiction mm-hmm. that there are certain authors and, you know, certain stories that, they're very well known on the internet anyway. Like yeah. you don't need to have that legitimized by Amazon because exactly, we've all heard of it, we've all read that story. Yeah. See now there's a massive benefit to being a popular fan fiction writer. You have a ready made if you can get a huge audience 
and then once you finish your story, if in the background you've been writing your own thing, you can go, hey, if you enjoyed my writing, I've got an original book coming out. And you can Check write to your <laughs> agent when you're doing your application and say well yeah maybe you've never heard of me but if you'd like to check out i have a million people my million my readers <laughs> here they are uh which yeah. is probably i mean i feel like that could be the kind of extra push you might need to get a manuscript accepted because mm. it's like it's like the reason why they'll make a film of a book because mm. they know that the, the fan base is waiting yeah there's a very quick turnaround as well with films because of this, because of you know digital publishing, shelf publishing. They can see the trends happening before they happen almost. Yeah. Like the turnaround for some books are just crazy. Yeah. Just, you know, before some books even get released, they're like giving them movie deals. It's cr it is crazy. Yeah. That, because that's. I mean, I could see it for an established author, but that's a lot of faith to put into an unpublished manuscript. Mm. to say we think we'll get a return on our investment mm. so we're selling the film rights before we've even like really printed and distributed the book mm. it's uh that's a big vote of confidence yeah it's a lot to live up to <laughs> <laughs> um do we have time to talk about to write about dick authors or shall we switch up we could we so. could do we could make a start on that we can run oh yeah i'll run it yeah, happened, it it happened this week around. Uh, I just want to bring it up because <laughs> there was not one but two authors really riled me up this week. The first one it fits with the fan fiction mm -hmm. because it's someone I followed on Twitter. He's got a lot of followers, so he's you know he's an established author. Um, I can't think of his name. I, w pro I wouldn't say it anyway, really. Um, well, we did we did attempt to um, track the actual post. Yeah, I couldn't find it. It's gone. <laughs> um, but he the post was why I hate fanfiction and went on a massive kind of wrote a massive post about why he hates fanfiction started out with him talking about a girl who'd wrote a Harry Potter book and then it started doing the rounds and people thought it was a real thing and then she was getting really scared because she was like oh please don't sue me you know I didn't I didn't mean for this to get shared I just you know I like everyone else I just put it out there you know but you know that's an unusual case and no one got, there's no harm done. Well, no. She didn't mean, she's not out to get money from this. J.K. Rowling just, didn't turn around and no. go, what are you doing? Yeah, J.K. Rowling is not She's worried. fine. She like, seems to be fairly neutral, if not slightly positive towards yeah, her fan fiction. I, you know, I think she really appreciates the fans. And if that's their expression of, like, love an admiration for it then which why isn't, not? it's in the yeah. name it is yeah. fan fiction yeah. you know it's you've got to love the characters mm. enough to want to write them mm. and i think i think her i mean i, I suppose it's a bit easier because with jk rowling like i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say she probably doesn't need to make any more money <laughs> exactly <laughs> she's not worried if someone, so worried. someone's if someone like made some smutty slash fiction with draco and snape and they're selling it on the street for a fiver she's not gonna come chasing down she doesn't care have i just made the way this pairing no <laughs> oh my god that's out there don't even I'm like sure it is <laughs> like don't don't, don't 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 worry <laughs> about that you can't give us any ideas she says speaking on behalf of the harry potter fandom that we haven't come up with on our own already <laughs> So, oh god <laughs> it's not even that way no. don't even worry <laughs> and then the other one was like we've just been talking about the oh it's not original so it's yeah i agree if you then want to become an original author there are so many more challenges than that you wouldn't have in fan fiction you've got to build your own world your own characters you've got to make people you have a nice cheat in fan fiction of you already like this character. I'm going to sit them in a story. Yeah, I like that character. I'll, I'll read I'll, it. I'll read it. And you're you're forgiven a lot of sins in terms yeah. of that. Maybe you didn't describe mm. a scene very well. Maybe you yeah. just said Harry was in potions class, yeah. and everybody's read the books, and we all yeah. know what that looks like. We know Snape's at the front of the class or whatever. Yeah. It's it's a nice way in because mm. making that jump, which I mean, I have yeah. attempted anyway to, from mm. between fan fiction and writing my own fiction mm. I can see the differences and, I, yeah. and when I, I started writing fan fiction when I was really young yeah. 
and it took me a lot longer to get around to actually writing some original stuff down. I think I was at university by the time I started that. Mm -hmm. And it's only then that you really come to realise that it does, for me anyway, fan fiction work kind of like training wheels because I learned how to write a conversation and yeah, that exactly. Kind of thing. You, you, it's you're allowed to make these horrible mistakes, play around, and it is training because, yeah, I did all the all the classic mistakes, you know, spelling errors, formatting problems, yeah. the Mary Sue, all the rest Everything's of it. Everything's in there. You know, started lots of stuff I didn't finish. You know, whatever. But some... and now I have a. I have a book written, I have two books written yeah. that are original, all my work, I'm very proud of them. Not edited yet. No. <laughs> but, getting, but, getting you know, I'm getting that. Uh, there have been but, drafts. Like, the writing is so much better than then, so you can't go, oh no, it's too easy. But, and for another thing, not everyone is out to become a pro professional writer. No. There are people who do it just for the fun of it. Like, hey, that's a crazy concept. If you're doing it for the fun of it, then who cares? Exactly. So I just, I rage quit and unfollowed him, which is why I can't find this thing anymore. But that's probably yeah. a good thing, because I think yeah. we might have been compelled to reply. <laughs> and, um, and this other author um, basically said, I, I don't want to teach uh, my class about female authors. Um, can we go? <laughs> like, sorry? Um, so none of them? Yeah. I think this is a case of maybe he's worded it a bit wrong. Or it's been taken slightly, it's... not out of context, but we've focused perhaps on the wrong yeah. part of the sentence here. Um, but... you're, he's an author called David Gilmore uh, and he teaches classes at university. Um, and his argument is, hey, I really like the white, middle-aged, uh, male, heterosexual author because it's the nearest to me, it's the most I can, um, you know, sub empathise with, uh, I'm really passionate about them, and if I'm passionate then that means I can pass that on to my students so they can leave going, oh yeah, I really want to read this author. Um, Except there seems quite a large flaw in that logic, yeah. which I mentioned yeah. earlier, because the whole reason he's saying he's choosing these authors in particular mm. is because they most closely represent him, mm. that he is, you know, a white mm. middle-aged yeah. man, and and to then say that is your reasoning behind selecting these books to teach your class, well, I don't think you've got a class full of um, white middle-aged yeah. guys yeah. to um, identify with the novel in the same way. You know, you might have a young Chinese girl in the back of the class who sat there going, well, why do I care? It's nothing like me. Why should yeah. I care? <laughs> like, why do I care about this author yeah. if you don't care about yeah. the other, you know, yeah. like, female Chinese mm. writers? Like, why should they conform mm. to his... Mm like normative reading yeah if he won't even try what else is out there yeah and that's like my big issue with this i mean like some of my favorite books and authors are from backgrounds that are nothing like mine yeah you know that's why i enjoy ben aronovitz so much because he writes a character who is of mixed race has to deal with racism he's in london where there's a lot of different religions lots of different people and it's so interesting for that reason. And it puts me in the mind of someone who is nothing like me. But, you know, similar, you know, has the sense of humour and is still, like, English. So yeah. I, there's still a level of um, easy empathy there. But it's so it's interesting because I never have to deal with racism, you know. But someone who's darker skinned does. That's, you know, that's the sad fact of life. And so to be able to put have me put in that person like in their mind is really interesting it makes it sound like it's a really serious book it's not he kind of brushes but it's it up there. but it's, it's, it's there it's all part you know. of the you know the painting it's and it uh, makes you it, by by like raising your almost like awareness yeah. i guess it makes you more 
aware of how you're mm. acting. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not saying that that you're, you know, you're going to suddenly be like, <laughs> oh my god, I've been secretly <gasps> racist for my entire life. <laughs> but yeah. I, don't know, I mean, you yeah. you're you're guessing another point of view, yeah. and that can't be a bad thing. And that is the beauty of books that it is a variety. You can read something written by someone so far from yourself. It's hard to imagine, but then it puts you in their like shoes, and, and it's brilliant. I mean, who picks <laughs> up a book and instead of turning to the back of the book for the blurb, goes to the author page mm. and chooses a book based on the author? I think there are established authors. I think um, yeah, I I'm can, not sure if it mentions. I am. I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm hyperboling that just for <laughs> effect, but. Yeah, I, it's not. It, I just don't. I don't feel as though that's um, a very sensible decision. Yeah, like I said, I do think it's not. He wasn't trying to be as horrible as the stories make him out to be. Yeah. But I think there are some errors there. Yeah. <laughs> he he needs to think about. What he At says. the end of the day, <laughs> the thing we're taking <laughs> offence to here is actually a direct quote. Um, yeah, we've yeah. not given it the context. But he said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think before you say these things. Especially if you're speaking to a reporter, like maybe. Think before you... I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and I think we've covered everything. We have. I, th- I think uh, was... quite quite nicely in time to fast forward the breaks on Shield. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Catch up. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, the the two best ways to get in contact with us, we have an email address which is bookdragonspodcast at gmail dot com. Didn't hear that? Here it is again. <laughs> bookdragonspodcast at gmail dot com. Book dragons was already taken. Um, oh my god! <laughs> I you took it. I don't know. I, I'll have to treat. I'll have okay, to down. If you know <laughs> the person who yeah. has book dragons. We want to speak to them. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we need that. I need I need to know who that was. Um, we're also on Twitter, so you can find us at Book Dragons. No podcast in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we basically, got there first. <laughs> but if you can't remember where to find us, basically search Book Dragons podcast on Google. You'll find us, um, and all and our individual Twitter handles will be in the description below, uh, as will be various other information and we will do the listing of the books we have been yeah about. that's going to be on like i said that's going to be on the website, on the website. so yeah. that's mzors.com um em forget that <laughs> <laughs> I, I started with m but it's, it doesn't go with m <laughs> it does when you say mm, it M-Zors. <laughs> <laughs> like mm, cookies <laughs> yeah that's the link for that's going to be below <laughs> so the the lists are going to be on the website just because they're going to be way too long <laughs> yeah um and that's it. That's I, it. Yeah, we're well, on to we're on to reviews, aren't we? Next week. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I haven't <laughs> mentioned that because you've been reading Divergent. Divergence. I have. I've been reading Good Owens. I'm still working on that. I'm round about the hundred page mark. But you finished Divergent. I have, but I'm now actually <laughs> rereading Good Omens <laughs> so that I can talk about it. Well, we'll do. We'll definitely do Divergent next week. If yeah. I finish Good Omens by then, we'll do that as well. But that cool. will very possibly be the week after. Uh, so if you want to join in the discussion, uh, now's the time to reread it if you want or whatever. Yeah, it's so, always good. Yeah, catch up with that. Yeah, and that's everything. That's it then. Goodbye. See you soon.